Okay, so now that we understand what GDP is, the next concept that we need to be clear about is the difference between nominal GDP and real GDP. And the difference is quite simple. Uh, so basically, uh, all right, let me just give you guys uh, so let me just tell you all right now that every the, the examples that I'm doing in today's lecture are all from the book. So this example about GDP that I that we went through is from the book, and this example that I'm about to show you guys is also from the book. Okay. So suppose we have three years. So we're starting with 2017. We'll go on to 2018, and then we will look at 2019. And suppose, you know, staying within the, within the scope of the first example, suppose we're looking at Bangladesh and Bangladesh only produce one good, that is cars, which is obviously not the case, but okay. So in 2017, suppose Bangladesh produced 10 cars, 10 finished goods. 10 cars and nothing else. In 2018, Bangladesh produced a bit more, 12. And in 2019, Bangladesh produced 13 cars. Now, to calculate the GDP, obviously what we need is the money value of this finished goods. The money that you can earn by selling these goods. So, price. Suppose the price in 2017 was 20,000. So each car was selling for 20,000. In 2018, the price had gone up to 24,000. And in 2019, the price had gone up to 26,000. So one thing to notice here is that quantity and price are both increasing. And in real world, this is a relationship that we almost always observe, is that over time, it can be a few years, it can be decades, it can be even shorter, a few months. But what we usually notice is that quantity and price are both increasing over time. Why that is important, we will come to very soon, but let's carry on. So now we want to calculate the GDP. How do we do that? We take the quantity, the finished goods that the country has produced, and we try to find the value of those goods. So in this case, we simply multiply Q with P. So if we do that, we're going to get 20,000, uh, sorry, 200,000 to 88,000, and this is uh, 338,000. So effectively, what we are seeing here is that in 2017, the money value of the 10 goods that, of the 10 cars that Bangladesh produced was 200,000. In 2018, the money value of everything that Bangladesh produced was 288,000. And in 2019, the money value of everything that Bangladesh produced was 338,000. This effectively is nominal GDP. So there is one major problem with using nominal GDP figures. And that is that when we are dealing with GDP figures, what we usually want to do is make comparisons between countries or between two different years, let's say, within a same country, for a same country. So suppose we want, we ask the question that, are the standard of living in Bangladesh better in 2019 than compared to 2018? So how would we figure that out? What we can see is that nominal GDP in 2019 is higher than the nominal GDP in 2018. 
And that may be a basis for us to argue that standard of living in 2019 is actually better because the country is making the, the, the monetary, monetary value of all the goods that the country has made is higher. So the standard of living must be better. The problem with making that argument is that price level has also gone up between 2018 and 2019. So the rise in GDP that we're seeing between the two years, maybe because quantity produced has gone up, or it may be because price has gone up. Now, in this simplified example, it's very easy to see that both Q and P has gone up. So it's, it, it's not very difficult to figure out actually what's going on. But when you think of the real world, the real economy, we're dealing with hundreds and thousands of goods. They each have a price level. They each have, you know, a quantity that's been produced, a quantity that's been sold. There's import, there's export, and things get very complicated. And so comparison between years is often difficult. If Bangladesh had, let's say, GDP worth 250 billion in 2018, and let's say 260 billion in 2019, it would actually be very difficult for us to say that this 10 billion increase in GDP, was this primarily due to a rise in price level or was this primarily due to price in quantity? So this, so nominal GDP is not very helpful in this matter. To do that, what we, Calculate is something called a real GDP. In real GDP, what we do is we take a common price. So instead of letting the price level vary between years, suppose what we decide is that we're going to assume that price level was 24,000 in all three years. So, uh, 24,000, let me use a different ink. So we're going to assume price was 24,000 here, 24,000 here, and 24,000 here. By doing this, what we're effectively trying to do is negate the fluctuations in price level. And so the GDP figure that we're going to calculate is going to move up or down purely based on output. If we're producing more, our output, our real GDP will be higher. If we're producing less, real GDP will be lower. So let's do that. So real GDP for 2017 will be 24,000 right here, multiplied by 10. So that, well, that gives us 240,000. In 2018, same thing, 12 cars multiplied by 24,000. So this doesn't change. And in 2019, 13 cars multiplied by 24,000. So that gives us 312,000. Now this is real GDP because the rise between each year is based solely on the fact that Bangladesh is now producing more and price has no effect on it, no effect on the GDP figure. So as we study 207, we're going to come across a lot of real figures. So real GDP, real wage, you know, and effectively what the real term means is price invariant. It, it basically means is that rise and fall in the price level has no effect on it. Real GDP is not affected by the price level. Two more GDP related concepts that all of you should know and all of you should have learned in ECO 102 
are uh, number one. Uh, oops. Okay. Number one was what's happening? GDP per capita. And number two is the GDP growth rate. I'm not really going to spend any time going through this two. Uh, if you do not remember what these two are or how to calculate them or why we need to calculate them, I will request you to please go back to your one or two notes, go through that and see if you can sort of jog your memory. And if you still have some confusions, you can obviously ask me. So this concludes our discussion on G.